Yeah, look, deep down, I know they're puppets, but the affection, the love, the stuff that so many people, myself included, feel for the Muppets, that's real. And it's a testament to the vision and the heart of their late creator, Jim Henson. When Jim died suddenly back in 1990, it was his son, Brian, who essentially grew up alongside Kermit and Miss Piggy, who was tasked with overseeing the Muppet revival. He took what many consider to be the greatest story ever told, I'm talking a Christmas Carol, and made it even cooler the Muppet Christmas Carol. There's more of gravy than of grave about you. <laughs> and while the Muppets were sold to Disney in 2004, Brian is still pulling the strings. Oh, let's see what we did there. That's right, he's still pulling the strings with the Jim Henson Company. Now they've got a new stage show that features sort of anti-hero Muppets. It's called Puppet Up Uncensored, a live improv show that is definitely not for the kids. Puppet! Welcome to the program, Brian Edson. I'm great. Thanks. Welcome to the program. Let's see. Hey, thanks for having me. What's going on? Wow, here in Toronto, this is great. Fun, right? <laughs> the, um, I, just, I, love, I mean, I love the fact of improv puppets yeah. and uncensored puppets in a way. Just at the beginning of this, like, where, where, where did it first click in your mind we could do this? Well, <laughs> we call this the other side of the Jim Henson Company. And <laughs> the truth is, it's actually almost like a return to the roots for, for my dad. When he started, it was all late night television. But of course, it was the 50s, so yeah. it's all completely censored. But he always had a very irreverent, subversive sense of humor. And, uh, and it was very adult. The stuff that he did was quite adult. But it was always safe for kids. And, uh, and then, of course, he did the Ses Sesame Street and the Muppet Show. But as a kid, I would visit the sets, and everybody would always say the same thing. The funniest stuff is before the actor says action, before the director calls action yeah. or after the director calls cut, that that was the funniest, because the puppeteers would stay in character, and then they'd start getting really blue with each other. Yeah. And it was viciously funny, and also the way that those characters developed. As a viewer, People think that puppets are no longer for them, so that's what I find so interesting about what you're doing. It's a place to go to reconnect to your first pure moments of entertainment, but it's updated for you. Puppets really chalk to, to adults in such a way that, that you can't get through to them often, which allows you to do some pretty intense stuff with puppets that really connect with people and make them look at themselves I mean, a in better. South Africa and places, you have a puppet that is HIV positive. There's yeah. things that... Gender. No, and the Israeli Palestine yeah. Sesame co production has been, I don't know how many decades it's been on air, but it's been on air. Gender issues, time. cultural issues, all these responsibilities I think that fall on broadcasters, puppets pick up the slack in some respect. So when you were creating stuff or you're in the company, was that always part of the conversation? It was. It was. Almost, it, it almost didn't need to be discussed because it was very deep rooted in my dad. He he grew up in Mississippi in a, in a pretty tough time. I've been in Greenville. Greenville's a yeah. tough town, man. Yeah, well, now it's a, yeah, it's a nice place now. But Greenville, in you know, my dad was born in '36 and he didn't leave until I think uh, 40, '48. I mean, and oh and that was a tough time. There was yeah. tough, tough, tough stuff going on down there. And Free civil it, rights movement, right? So yeah, it was. So my dad, it was very deep rooted in him. Like you'll notice it was almost, there was almost no stories about nuclear families, about how you should love your brother and sister and your parents, you know? There was none of Disney wholesomeness to Henson. Yeah. Instead it was about you gotta love people for their differences, you have, to, you, you, you have to form a family by coming together, by being radically different individuals. And that's the whole Muppet thing, you know? You got a pig and you got a, a whole, you know, you've got a bear and you got a frog and, and they all come from different backgrounds, but they love each other and they become a family. And his whole thing has always been about bringing people together and breaking down prejudice. And, and Fraggle Rock was really designed, which is a show we shot here yeah, in Toronto. Are. And that was, that was, that's absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that was a show that was designed to help bring around, bring about world peace. Because the whole idea is there's three populated, the Doozers, the Fraggles, the Gorgs. Yeah. They all think they're enemies, but they're all totally codependent. And if any one of those groups is pulled out of the mix, the other t two would die. They're completely codependent. So it's about, you know, how they think they're enemies, but they're really codependent. And they eventually, you know, they have to learn to work together and eventually love each other. He'd mentioned the word wholesome, Disney, and I know the Muppets are separate now, who owns them, but what do, you, what do you think about what's happened to it? I wondered sometimes, think about you and 
the Muppet Company, the Muppet Show, that kind of stuff. Is it like visiting your the childhood home you grew up in? Like you have so many memories there, but it's not you don't live there anymore. What's that experience like? Well, it's uh, yeah, I guess there is a little bit of that. It was, um, you know, my when my dad died, I was 26, so and then young, I, I was it was. I was young, and I was in London. I was really working on animatronics and the creature shop and doing Labyrinth and movies like that, not so much Muppets. And then suddenly to be in charge of the company and in charge of the Muppets was a sort of, uh, a bit of a, an, an it, over, it was a bit overwhelming. Yeah. And then nobody, you know, it was, I was, I couldn't find somebody to, to direct the Muppets. People were kind of terrible. So then I, had to, I did the first movie. I did Muppet Christmas Carol, which I'm still, I, I'm so proud of. I still feel like it's one of the best things I did. But, but, but to then be entirely responsible for the Muppets for uh, all those years, um, I frankly I needed I needed a little bit of a, a break. Yeah. And my dad wanted the Muppets to go to Disney. He he was selling the entire company to Disney when he died. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until, and after he died, we, my brother and sisters and I, decided not to complete that deal. Stick around more with Brian <laughs> right after this. <laughs> That's great, man. All right, up next, Brian helps me channel my inner puppet. Truth is, he was there all the time. He just never got out, till now. I can't believe you guys pulled up this clip. <laughs> I mean, that thing was a big deal, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah, that was the first ever Muppet Penguin, and I made that. You made that. I made him when I was, I think I was 14, and I was, I, my dad was making the Muppet Show in London. And uh, they were always building new puppets all the time. There was always two episodes out. We're going to need four talking watermelons. We're going to need a potato that knows how to sing <laughs> going ooh. And, you know, and they'd, you know, they'd have all these things. And, uh, and you know, they wanted this penguin and, and the workshop. I just said, hey, can I make one? And they said, yeah, sure, you make the penguin. So I made the penguin. But... That's awesome. But uh, to me, it was, a, it was a big deal when Frank picked it because that was, a, and he probably did it. To, to be nice to me, but but uh, it is interesting that then the penguins became a big deal. Of course, penguins and the rats. So when, when you, I love the rats, big, by the way. Yeah, the rats. Yeah, I, <laughs> so we, listen, we have this crate over here. Okay. So we got puppets in here. Yeah, cool. Let's do this, man. Yeah, I'm gonna show you how this, how we do it. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna take two of these guys out. All right. I'm gonna give. Okay, one's for you, one's for okay. me. All right, we're gonna come down here. That's all right. All right, so actually, I'm going to put this one at my feet for a second. It'll be okay. He'll be good there. He's got a hard shell. All right, so. Yeah. All right, now here's how it works. So you right handed or left? I'm right handed. Okay. So my right hand goes up the ass, all right? Yeah, we're straight right. up there. Yeah, all right. All the way up. Okay. Okay. So the fingers mouth. on top, thumb underneath. Fingers on top. Yeah. Yeah, like that. You feel it? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay, so now put your hand straight up. Okay, bring the camera up a little higher. See, this is, all right, so this is the way we work. So. <laughs> So See, with, it's easy. It's easy. So See? wait, with these teeth, is he supposed to have a British accent, or what am I supposed to do with this? You can do whatever you want. All right. But you want to be careful about this part. OK. This, All right. No, no, look back here. There, right. that part's meant to be down. Good. All right. All right. All right. But stand up nice and tall. Yeah, right. you see, and, and this is the way we work. We look at the monitors, so right. you see, you, we look at the monitors, that's the way we see what we're doing. Who's, who's on the other side of the glass? I don't know, what is that? That's so weird. Everyone in the audience sees that we're looking at them. Is that, what, are, put pants on, what are you doing at home? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> well, actually, a little bit about our, our puppetry, because part of our technique is this connection with the audience mm -hmm. that not many other puppet groups do. So, mm -hmm. so we often look at the camera. Okay. We'll, we'll have a line and then we'll look at the camera, ah, uh, for a laugh. Right. But you're not, see, you gotta look I'm right looking. at the camera. I'm looking. No, you're not, you're not looking in. Okay. There you go. Right. Okay, there you are. And Listen. the other thing is, you want to make sure you talk with your mouth right, in okay. sync with your dialogue. Right, totally fair. Yep. Yeah. You're going to have to just work on that a little bit more. You think? All right, hands, hands. Now, when mm. you walk, you want to try to make it look real, right? Like you've got legs. <laughs> you just went, I didn't even know there was a stick. I didn't know there was a staircase <laughs> there. Let me go look. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, there is a staircase there. <laughs> 
What a pleasure, man. <laughs> okay. Oh. There you are. Okay, so basically, you want to watch Pop It Up. It's at the, uh, well, at the Uncensored Show. It's in the Panasonic Theater, October 22nd through November the 3rd, okay, with uh, this guy right here, Brian Henson, everybody. Yeah, we'll come right see the show. You almost got me there. You got it.